Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. It's 4 p.m. on Tuesday, December 27th, uh, 2022, and this is the meeting of the Sandpoint Arts, Culture, and Preservation Commission, and we are now called to order. Um, next up, roll call. For the record, I am Chairwoman Ellie Cessness, presiding at City of Sandpoint Council Chambers, uh, 1123 Lake Street in Sandpoint, Idaho. Commission members? Uh, Carol Kowalczyk. Barry Burgess. Steve Garvin. Woody Sherwood. Go ahead, Rick. Rick Decker via Zoom. Karen. Helen Wiedemeyer via Zoom. And I think that's it. Thank you so much. So we're missing Hannah Combs. And Mike Lipgow. Excuse me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Next up on the agenda is the meeting minutes approval. We will now proceed with the approval of the minutes from the commission's last meeting. Uh, can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the November 22nd, 2022 meeting? I so move to approve the minutes from the November 22nd meeting. I second. Madam Chair, just a clarification that will be the November 29th minutes. Oh. Oops. Says, okay. The November 29th mi mi minutes? Oh. It's been, they need to be amended. I apologize for interrupting again. Do the minutes indicate that they're November 22nd? Or does the agenda need to be amended? The agenda amended? needs to be amended. No, they're, the minutes are also November 22nd. So what actually was a November 22nd meeting then? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that, is that, it, it just says November 29th on the agenda. That's why I was where am I? We can check, right? Yeah, as they look at our phones. Oh, I don't know. I think, that, yeah, this is. It was the 22nd. 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 Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's correct, that this is. Just wondering what the date was. Is it 22nd? 22nd. Yes. Okay, so it's the, the agenda, agenda just had a title. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I apologize, everybody. I'm down here on the next line. Oh, I am so sorry. That's okay. Cammy did perfectly. She okay, did. perfect. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's the 22nd. I'm on the wrong line. I okay, apologize. awesome. No problem. All right, so uh, was there a vote? I apologize. There was a first and not. second. Yes, there was a first yep. and second. Steve? And Carol seconded. Uh, so um, let's vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I heard Karen and I didn't hear Rick. He put his hand up. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Any opposed? Sorry about my feedback. <laughs> None opposed, so that motion passes. All right. Next up is the financial report. Um, it probably is the same as it was. Let's see. Melissa, do you have any input on if it was the same as, as the previous? I have it right here. So we have the store funds, uh, downtown, 100,040. Yeah, there, there's a slight Sorry. difference. There's a slight difference. From the November 29th meeting? Mm -hmm. yep. 143. Yeah, I'm, my blood sugar is a little bit low. Can you read those? Others? Absolutely. The downtown, there's $143,697.72. In the Northern District, $78,623.73. For the Silver Box Art on Loan Program, we have a remaining balance of $5,159.78. How come only the Northern one changed and it went up? Just, I mean, just a small question. Uh, I'm assuming... They both downtown and the Northern tank. Oh, yeah, they, they, oh sorry, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I believe that just more fun. means that there's depends on the, depends on the activity. Yeah. yeah. The okay. development. All right. All right. Is there any questions on those numbers? All right. Let's move on then to number five, a old business, the NEA ARP subgrant program. 
Perfect. Would you like to give us a report? I would love to. So all of the grant agreements are out, um, which is very exciting. So those are coming in um, with signatures. And um, it was just a, a little bit more of an involved process because it was a government subgrant um, funds. Um, and in conjunction with sharing that news with you, I'm also excited to let you know that I've been working on the new landing page for arts, culture, and historic preservation, which I have up here. And so here's the, the first page. There we go. It's got a little, there's fairies, amazing. Yay, urban sketch. So is this up or is this draft? It's a link that I can share once I have it developed. Um, and then I also have the link to the master plan right here. But why I'm kind of showing you guys the, the start of this is I was able to create a really neat um, landing page specifically for the NEA, NEA art operations cool. support grant. Oh, great. So with every funding source we have and every program we have, I can create one of these really great landing pages. And um, so here it's showing you a little bit about um, the grant. And then I have the grant description attached here. And sorry, my feedback's a little slow up here. <laughs> then we have all that were awarded. Oh, wonderful. Little great. That's very here. easy to read too. That's great. Thank you. It's been fun to put together. And then we did a workshop too on Monday, December 19th. And um, that was an opportunity for people to be able to zoom in or be um, physically present to understand the process. Oh, very nice. Wanting to make sure that they um, knew all the ins and outs. And then um, just a little, if you have any questions. So I'm really excited through this process, I was able to find that this is gonna be the best tool for sharing information about different projects. <laughs> um, so that worked out really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that. Does anybody have any questions about the grant? Wonderful. All right, moving on then to 5B, the utility box wrap sponsored by STCU. Do you have a report on that? So our goal was to try to get that um, photo fixed on the one box on Cedar and Fix. Unfortunately, the weather came and boy did it. So I've worked with the owner of the company and they are going to, they've assured that they're going to do the fix on that. And so um, it will just be held off until springtime and then be fixed we'll get the press release out on all of that and we can move so that'll probably be q2 um yeah uh say that one more time or second quarter probably when you say spring yeah so once the weather right dries out and you can do a vinyl fix on that box um but all the artists are so excited about the boxes yeah. and that we got to this point yeah and yeah they're thrilled about yeah. doing a press release and everything in the springtime I know a few of the artists have shared them on Facebook and they okay. a lot of the responses. So that was wonderful. And what is the minimum temperature that you can wrap vinyl? Oh, that's remember? a great question. Well, Just curious. Well, I was thinking maybe you meant like April or something because March is always iffy. And so that's why I was asking about Q2. It's essentially when the weather will be prohibitive. Well, yeah. Like 40. Yes. <laughs> Which could be next week, but you, you know, exactly. whatever. Uh -huh. And you know, it's one of those things where I don't even think people notice it, but you know, we're we're all about attention to detail here. That's so. right. We'll know. All right. Uh, are there any questions on the box traps? All right. Moving on then to 5C, the cultural collective campaign. So you guys keep hearing me talk about this great idea about gathering um, our community's history so they can see themselves and all that we do. Um, I'm still learning um, all the different um, processes of government. And um, one of the things that came to my attention is that we cannot do a general upload of information from the public. 
Um, that's a, a fantastic way to have a virus come through and infiltrate our system. Um, so that gave me a, a moment to be able to pivot and um, I am going to be contacting the museum. I had a meeting set with them, but illnesses and everything happened. So um, we are going to meet and my, and my hope is that we can create a partnership with this program because collecting historical information is what they do over there. Okay. So if we can support them by creating the platform, then um, we can be able, we have a great public partner relationship with the museum. <laughs> we can be able to access that information. And um, but I love the idea that the, the initial support will create a vehicle for them and, and then we can go from there. Um, so they would be the intake. That's right. And then if it's filtered through them, it's acceptable within the parameters that we have to operate. Yeah. We have to operate so under. if we're working on a specific project like Travers and we want to hear all about the wonderful moments uh, the community has with Travers Park, um, we would help the museum um, and support them on gathering that information. And um, and then that would go in their repository and build their archives at the same time. So I just have to sit down with their new executive director and have that conversation. And find out whether the staff will be involved and volunteers be involved. Right. Things like that. Exactly. But um, I, I think it could be an amazing platform that, that could really be helpful to the community at large. Awesome. It's with the holidays it's in meetings, it's hard to, um, in the weather, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of sand through the hands. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, were there any questions on that report? All right, hearing none, let's head on to 5D, which is the Idaho Gem Grant. Wow, I am so excited to let you all know that we submitted the Gem Grant on December 19th. So it's just a matter of fingers crossed. Um, I talked to um, the Idaho Gem um, facilitator and he informed me that um, they go through a period in January where they have some other things that they're working on. So hopefully in February, we'll hear who the awardees are. And this person is in which office or which department? Or um, so this is the... Idaho Department of Commerce. Okay, thank you. Were there any questions on the Idaho Gem Grant? All right, hearing that, let's move on to new business. So we have 6A, which is the first item under new business, the Galaxy Graffiti Alley. So, as you, um, I all are, are, is everybody here familiar with what Galaxy Alley is, also known as Graffiti Alley? Perfect. Um, I had a wonderful meeting with um, Claire and Carol from POAC, and um, they came to me, and they need support um, for Galaxy Alley. So historically, it was a wonderful public partner relationship with the city, the private business owners, and POAC. And I'm sure Carol and Ellie, you can elaborate on this. Um, there was a wonderful education program that was developed with the charter school in Holly Walker, which is still happening. Um, so I, I love all the ties that Galaxy Alley does, um, that has. And one of the things that, um, and they're gonna come back to me with a further definition of what their needs are, but they need supplies um, for the artists. So I've asked them to put together a scope of, in a budget of what they need. Fantastic. And also um, <clears throat> they said it'd be helpful if they had someone assist them within the schools at times. So mm -hmm. I also wanna get a further definition of of what that means, but I'm sure one of us would love to go into the schools and help and support the students who are participating in that program. Um, it, I get questions all the time from other cities about it. I think it's really a, a fun one. Um, so what? So this is actually not going to be, um, in fact, let me see if I'm saying this correctly. If we could take this off as an action item. I thought that I would have that information before um, if we could table that motion. 
Um, this is more of an information sharing for you all. And as soon as I have more information about their needs, then we can um, figure out if that's something we can support them. Um, may possibly we look at community funding sources or uh, we look at um, using our SURA dollars to help support that public art program. Is it uh, thousands or we just have no idea? Yet? I suspect it's probably 500 to 1,000, oh, okay. maybe uh, probably under $2,000. Okay. I have a question on that. Was this involved in a curated design of what people are going to put up there or do there, we just give them the paint let them go put whatever no, they want? Or? There's a, quite a process similar to the mural process that we okay. have. And so they have to apply in order mm -hmm. to and show actual a schematic of what their drawing will look great. like. One thing that I thought was interesting is it's a rotating canvas. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the artist has to um, do an upkeep on their, um, their piece. Okay. So if any graffiti happens, they have to go back and fix it. So they have to maintain it as well. Um, okay. Because I was trying to figure that out because we don't want every alleyway to probably have graffiti. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. how does that work <laughs> in terms of, you know, and that is my understanding is um, there's certain moments that are slated for a new opportunity and, and then that process comes through and it would come through us as well. Right. So we would decide what, what would be appropriate and what would be. Karen, did you have a question? Um. No, I think that um, when when it's time to discuss what the murals could look like, um, you know, and if there can be a different canvas, I think then it's probably where um, I'd like to um, share some thoughts. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think that's fine to wait with, uh, with that question since um, it looks like we'll be discussing collectively what murals can go there and whatnot. And we can have a point person with uh, the instructor, whoever that ends up being, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Right. All right. Any other questions? Sounds like a great project. I mean, it's been very popular. Uh, people come to the alley when they come to Sandpoint, yeah. for sure. Get those Instagram photo yeah, opportunity. Absolutely. And we would point it out sometimes with the walking tours, too. Fantastic. Absolutely. Very good. All right. And Mosa, do we have to do anything official to table that? As um, an action item? Since it's listed as action, I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt to do a motion to postpone. Um, that way it postpones it um, to the uh, to a future agenda, uh, but it'd be like the next agenda, for instance. All right. All right. So Woody has made a motion to postpone this as an action item. Do I have a second? Second. Steve seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Rick? Very good. See Rick? How about Karen? I think yep. I saw her. Oh, look, Very good. Hand. All right. Thanks, you guys. So we've got a lag, so it's hard to tell. Um, <laughs> all right. The motion passes to uh, postpone this agenda item. All right. So. Next up, 6B, National Alliance of Preservation Commission, NAPC. So as Steve has mentioned before, this is an amazing education resource for us all. It's known as NAPC. Um, and Steve, I'll probably have you piggyback with me on this one. But essentially, um, they're there as a huge support for us. Um, I actually spoke to our new representation at SHPO, the State Historic Preservation is, Office. Is, the new? Um, is this instead of Dan or something this different? Is, this is their new hire. I have to get back to you on that. Okay, if you would let me know. Yeah, and um, she, and I so she runs the CLG program. Right. And I had a really great conversation with her. She's really wonderful. And um, she was really excited about um, NAPC. And my understanding is that it's actually our main, um, main vein of education for historic preservation commissions. Um, so they have quite a few programs, one of them being CAMP, which Steve, I'll have you elaborate on. But essentially what, what they're there is to educate, train, they're big on advocacy, and they have these amazing webinars as well. 
Um, you also have other resources. Um, with, you can work with other cities um, with design guidelines, preservation plans, technical assistance. There's a directory, assistance with surveys. Um, so I did sign the city up with a membership. Absolutely. So we are a CLG with SHPO, and we now are members of NAPC. So as those webinars come through, I'd be happy to share that with you guys. Um, and if you have any information for me and you want anything looked up, and these are Contact webinars we could participate in yeah. as individuals or members or whatever. Yeah. So uh, the way that I understand it, I did, I was able to hop on one, which was about mid-century housing mm -hmm. and a design overlay, and it was so fabulous. Um, and so what I can do is when I do the webinar, I have a recorded video that I can share with oh, you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, awesome. But I was over the moon about it. I know Steve always is. Um, and I'm so sorry, uh, circling back about who I spoke with, it. her name is Maria Rochelle, Thank so M-A-R-I-A, okay. and then Rochelle is R-A-C-H-A-L, so she, she is the CLG coordinator for yep. Idaho SHPO, that's okay. S-H-P-O. So is Dan there still? I just didn't want to make... Uh, yeah, but uh, he, okay. Dan had to wear many hats right, now, right, so Maria right. kind mm -hmm. of took in right. that, that faction of it. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, so I think we're going to, it's wonderful to be able to have this advocacy group, um, and I think there's just going to be an endless amount of education opportunities for us. Would you like to elaborate on this? Well, just what I brought back after the uh, conference in Cincinnati in July, just to reiterate very briefly, this is an incredible resource. Seminars, webinars, every two years other than the pandemic, a physical conference. Next one will be in the July 24 in Jack in Florida, of all places in July. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> what I just was every day mind blown by the depth of resources and the variety, whether it was uh, materials to use, whether it was um, legal and continuing ed kind of things, it, it just, they are, as you said, the National Organization for People Serving on Preservation Commissions, so an incredible resource as we grow and get more sophisticated in our preservation uh, efforts and activities. I just, I, I was just truly excited, and they postponed it two years, so um, I've been an individual member for probably four or five years now, yeah. but um, I think it's great for Sandpoint for this commission. I'm so glad you feel that way too, Steve. Yeah, it's kind of like... Um, your friends that you've been looking for your whole life, Aww. you know, like you meet these, it's, it's such an incredible resource. So you guys are going to love it. Is there a charge to become a member? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it was a hundred dollars. Oh. Yep. So it wasn't too bad. And then I think that I believe the webinars are free for members, I but I did, correct. it was like the webinars are only $10. So I can oh, wow. let you guys know ahead of time if you want to watch yeah, them live. Okay. Um, Great. Yes. Are we under the umbrella of our commission? Yes. So I signed the city up. Right. So the commissioner, we're under the city's umbrella for that. So That's if there's correct. something we want to see, we can watch it. So what you would do is you you contact me. Okay. And then I would facilitate that for you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. And then if we wanted to go to a conference, um, how? What does that look like? So we would have to look at um, raising funds to be able to do that. And that's something that the CLG grant um, with SHPO is a wonderful opportunity for a lot of people to utilize that. We actually had funding in place um, from before the pandemic to go in Tacoma in 2020. And then when that got like a lot of things postponed mm -hmm. or whatever. But so this is something that we had already done as a prior commission with the CLG funding and everything. So I... I I think that should make it relatively easy to consider. I think we were planning to send um, maybe it was either two persons and somebody from the city or something last time, but um, I think it's just, I mean, I, I was just knocked out continually. What an incredible depth and richness of resources. NTP, you know, National Trust is great organization and there's other things, but this is so great nationally. Mm -hmm. And um, again, like one of the materials things I remember was 
a materials company that you could, um, for projects, purchase materials from that you never would have heard of probably otherwise. Right. Maybe right. it was in the East, but it doesn't mean they specialize only in the East. They went through all different kind of uh, building and restoration materials. And so the point is, this is a very, very rich treasure trove for preservation people. Things you'd never find otherwise. Certainly a great idea to think about <clears throat> in the coming years. Um, Unknown caller. I turned it down, sorry. <laughs> I think it's... Um, a good idea, you know, as as we're moving along and, and understanding our historic preservation journey here, you know, yeah. to kind of put that in the docket down the road. I'd love to put that on our <laughs> our graph of yes, opportunities. Our timeline <laughs> opportunities. Are yes. they focusing are they focusing on rural communities or uh um uh, or anyone? It's it's Everything. the whole gamut, and they it's they change up your series too, which is really neat. Okay. Um. Very good. Yes. All so sizes. Speaking of our chart, that Carol, Carol did her homework without being asked to do her homework no, necessarily. No, no. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um. So the grants and fellowship for arts and culture. So essentially. I'm of the thought of let's work smarter, not harder. And, but um, I really appreciate the way that government works too. And um, so my thought was with like the individual homework, we could have less meetings, but um, every, every time we get together, we communicate, it has to be op to open meeting law. So I think there's still gonna be a large amount of administrative work that I'm going to have to do, which I'm so happy to do, but I was just trying to balance that with trying to get that gem grant in, which consumed a lot of me. Um, I was up way late at night working on that, which I was so happy to do. Um, so know that I haven't forgotten about our amazing opportunities and grants and all of that, but I think it's something that we're gonna have to you know, dive into in the next year, but this is certainly like, a <laughs> a couple of them are, they, they're not necessarily one of them is really interesting because it doesn't give the funding but it tells you all the different places where you can go that's fantastic yeah. oh I so appreciate that Carol thank you so you guys are more than welcome to give me directly again just me not to our whole group any information if you want to go ahead and start searching for grant opportunities so Carol your list for arts and cultures is really nice and comprehensive so if someone wanted to go ahead and start working on that, that would be amazing. But if you want to wait until I get a little bit more of a framework down, um, I appreciate the patience with that. Absolutely. And the sooner you get the framework, the sooner we can get going filling those in. So. Absolutely. But we do have a new landing page. So. I know, that's <laughs> wonderful. And I'm thinking about all the things we can put on it. Right? Uh -huh. Very good, very good. Got some ideas. All right. Is there any more questions on uh, 6B? Um, I don't. It doesn't really matter. This is just a reminder. But unless you want me to wait till the end of the thing, just a reminder about that September conference in Boise that I had mentioned. Let's hold on ago. until the end. Okay. All right. Let's move on then to 6C, which is the review of historic preservation and sampling. So again, with the holidays and the gem grant and so forth. Um, I wasn't necessarily able to get you guys that information that you had requested for historic preservation. And, um, but I was able to understand the system of information sharing furthermore. Um, so know that um, I am going to be working on it and getting things organized for you all. And um, we'll just start uh, that journey, but certainly getting the membership to NAPC was a huge oh, win, and I think that will really help as I'm compiling that information for you to, to use that resource to piggyback with that. Very good. Are there any questions on that? Mm -mm. All right. Let's move on then to... Seven, which is general commission announcements and reports. Steve, would you like to? Well, um, just a reminder, this American Association for State and Local History that we spoke of over the last time we've come before, their annual conference is in Boise, September 6th to 9th, and the theme is I, too, am America. Mm -hmm. 
and um, Preservation Idaho will be providing some programming for that. Um, and that's as much as I know now, we're actually having a Preservation Idaho board meeting in a week or two as well. And I'll just keep us up to date, but it might be something of interest to a few people. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, letting us know. And if there's anything you guys want to share that not during our meeting, we can always send that information to me and I'd be happy to send it to you guys as well. That's a really good way to do it. So yeah, that's a that's a good uh, question. For instance, he had that that he wanted to share. Um, what if we had like, what if we shared with you, and then we had like a certain date where you sent out like a, a newsletter, a digest, or just a digest, which has what I mean, like you said, mm -hmm. I don't want you to be some, you know, having mm -hmm. to send things out every time you get something. Yeah. But if, um, you know, we have things that we want to share during the month. Yeah, if we absolutely. Send them to you send them to maybe... me. I'll compile them and then I'll send them out. Yeah, absolutely. We pick a day in the middle of the, middle of the month or two weeks ahead. or Unless it's time sensitive, obviously, which would be, you know, we but could know. I, I just wanted to get a sense from you um, of what parameters for that like you know so i shared these two little things one from the reader and one from another thing and um so if 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 we send things to you in asking them to be shared with the commission um is that a pretty open door or are there parameters that that we need to uh think consider before we ask you to share these things i mean i I just come across stuff all yeah, the time, and I, I'd like I think to share. It's appropriate to our group, and I think within reason. You know, if it's like a ton of hanging, that can be overwhelming. I think to all of us, and you, you guys understand my body of work um, that I do. But I'm happy to pass on information that you find intriguing and enlightening and helpful to our commission. Good. You know, think of those different criteria areas. As, as the viewer, like what would be helpful to us with this commission? Right, and that's what I've done so far, but it's only been a few things, and then that's why I wanted to make sure the to be clear. The key is you have to filter it through me, and then I share it with all of you, and that's so legally we're going according to open meeting law, and if we were ever in a situation, we know that we're doing everything appropriately, and we don't get wrapped up into any debacle that we don't want to be a part of. So that that's like it's it's super simple. Just send it to me, and I'll send it on. Did anyone on the Zoom have any questions about that? All right, oh. sounds good. Any other exciting? Yeah, well, I brought some. some I, I brought some things from. I was up in British Columbia. I brought some oh, things from Caslow. This is for you to look at. Oh, it's actually Caslow is this little tiny town, and it is the coolest place. And, oh, and so you'd be, it you'd be, it's, it's just, it's up, if you go through Nelson and up oh. past Ainsworth, it's the next city you hit, the big steamship is there, oh. and there's they're, a they're, museum they're, dedicated yeah. to a Japanese internment camp in a historic it's building. Really cool. I mean, it's a tiny town, but it's heavily arts and preservation. Yeah, orders. and so this is their booklet wow. that they put out, Thank just you. for Caslow. Wow, what a treasure. Yes. I appreciate that. And then this just comes from the, the whole Columbia Basin. This is called Articulate. And this magazine goes out, and it's the arts for of the area. Oh, wonderful! And then this is—they have their own vacation map to tell you where to hike, oh my cross country ski. <laughs> I guess to see Bigfoot at one point, so I don't know where that is. Yes. Anyway, that's what they call the West Kootenai region. Yeah, West Kootenai town. Anyway, so I'll front <laughs> that in. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> that's some fun. Yes, and I also would like to tell you, I will not be back. I am uh, resigning. Oh, we'll miss you. Moving on. on. I'm moving on. But we can still see you if you as an expert. Yeah, you can still call me and ask the questions. Thank you so much. And Carol. if you need help for the stuff, I, you know, we sure have appreciated all the years that you've served yeah. on the commission. Anyway, it's been such Thank a treasure. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. I got new skis. So. Thank you. <laughs> so there Thank you, go. you, Carol, for <laughs> participating. It's been uh, great. I enjoyed it. That's good. Before we do the golf clap. Yeah. <laughs> Very quietly. All right. Is there anyone else who has announcements? 
<laughs> Go red. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, one, one thing that's that's come up lately. You guys hear me all right? Sorry, you're both talking. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, one thing I wanted to bring up um, that's come up around downtown is uh, the snow on the sidewalks. And um, there's just not a consistent um, time that it's cleared. Um, there's, there's, you know, friends that I've talked to uh, don't like going downtown because sidewalks aren't cleared. And um, so right now it's up to uh, either the businesses or the land, uh, the property owners down there. And um, which is kind of tough because there's some dinner restaurants that aren't shoveling in the morning when people are walking by, you know, and, and vice versa. There might be a loan shop that, uh, you know, doesn't shovel on the weekends. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to promote uh, businesses downtown and, and, and get people walking, you know, on the sidewalks down there, but uh, it's covered in snow. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it would make sense if the city cleared uh, the walks, because they know when the when the street plows are coming, so it's not just getting pushed into the street and it's you know blocking somebody's car in because they've shoveled under somebody's car. So um, one thing that I wanted to bring up, maybe for an action item next meeting, uh, if we could recommend to council uh, to to clear downtown the sidewalks downtown, and I don't know how how that works. Um, you know, can can there be a uh, a fee for property owners, business owners, or something like that down there to to help pay for it? But um, just wanted to discuss it and get your views. I, I feel like it falls under um, our commission. Oh, well, I I certainly appreciate you bringing that to our attention, Rick. That does not fall under our commission, though. That is under streets um, and. Uh, and I, I really unfortunately can't speak to any details with that. Um, I know the weather has kind of surprised us all and it's it's been a full-time thing. And and I can I can say like the the field of phone calls that we've been taking and and our teams have been working really hard. I can tell you that because I'm seeing it here at the city, but that's all I can say to that. So um in terms of the the best um Person, Melissa, sorry. <laughs> I um, council just adopted a brand new snow Did policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of that information is available on the city website. Perfect. Yeah. And if you have any this questions, like this Wednesday or I mean last Wednesday or I don't remember which meeting it was, but okay. they recently adopted an, an, an updated snow policy. Okay. So go to the city website. That information is provided there. There's a snow hotline. Uh, if you have concerns, and you can call the snow hotline. Perfect. Rick, you you got all that information. Please forward that to your friends. So there's I'll the like snow it. hotline and then the website. Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check out, check that out. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything else, anybody? Uh, I'd like to I'd like to ask you a question about the waterfront design. Yes. And then I'd like to do a follow-up question about uh, Mark Freeman's article. Or not Mark Freeman. Uh, uh, the one you forwarded, uh, Ben, Ben, Ben Olson, yeah, Ben Olson's uh, article. Unknown caller. So, uh, what what's the status on the waterfront design? So, the um, Don Statsbury is putting together the competition manual, and it's going to be presented to council um, coming up. Hopefully, I think it's in January. Do we get a chance to? Get a bite of that. Absolutely. There's going to be um, so once the design competition happens and it goes through the process, there'll be public input and then you'll be a part of that. Okay. And so Ellie's representing our commission as a stakeholder. And we were also lucky enough to um, have Mike on there also representing from the Kalispell tribe. Um, so we have two representatives there um, that we can absolutely download to you guys. Um, and so there will be a due process where there's public opinion. Right. So Ben's opinion kind of created a little bit of a cocktail chatter during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And 
people ask because they kind of know that the funding commission yeah. where you we were spot, right? yeah where where were we focusing and I, I said you know well we spent a lot of time working on some of the art side of things and stuff right now and stuff and we're trying to get up to speed on the uh on the historical side of but it seemed to be that most people were feeling like that this historical side of things is so far behind that we can, you know, kind of kick it up in gear a little bit and just, you know, it's just cocktail chatter. I appreciate so I, that feedback. So as um, the technical expert, that's what I serve as with my position. So I'm able to answer any questions that the stakeholders have. I attend all the meetings. And then um, I also work closely with um, Don as he was putting together the design manual. And I, he has a copy of our arts, culture, and historic um, preservation master plan. He has all the documents from any future conversation about historic preservation that we've had at the city, including um, previous stakeholder meetings. Um, and I've also uh, downloaded any comments from um, any of the public observation with historic preservation and everything like that okay. has um, been downloaded to him from me. And then I also will be a technical advisor to all of the designers that participate in the competition. <clears throat> so with my position, um, they have me to be able to share any information that needs to be shared or knowledge about our community in terms of historic preservation. Needs, okay, great. Wants. Thank you. Absolutely. So, so we're expecting something to really start taking place. It should, next it should, month it's going to probably move fairly fast. Okay, good. It sounds like it. Yeah. It's been, it's been amazing how quickly it's been going. Right. Did you have anything that you'd like to elaborate on um, with that? You know, I just. Uh, Working with the municipalities, it just takes time. And we, with all our combined uh, commissions, we really didn't have a lot of grab on some of these things. But as we're learning through this process, especially the waterfront design process and learning with our new uh, mission, I think that we're going at the pace that we can at the citywide level, basically. Um, which actually I think is I think we move pretty quickly. Moving pretty quickly. Now cities. I know, I know. I've seen some of the things that other cities have had to go through. So, you know, I know we hear that stuff and we talk about that stuff a lot. Um, but it's it takes time. And public process is number one. Right. Definitely. Right. And and Definitely. we were the city, we can't do anything without public process, right? And Absolutely. that's that's what slows. That's I think the thing that, and when I say this, I'm not criticizing, but it tends to slow things down because it has to be filtered through a certain process. I totally get that. Oh, so, and I and I understand we're trying to do that. I'm just was trying to report back what oh, sure. I bet you get lots of questions. What people were yeah, mm -hmm. coming to me and saying. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. And you guys always reach out to me if you have questions or want to know statuses on things. I'm here for you. Very good. We appreciate that. And with that, is there any other questions from any of the team members or here? All right. Well, hopefully we can wrap this up right at 45 minutes. Um, Amazing. Let's do it. Uh, if there's nothing else, then let's go ahead and adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you.